Welcome to the second part in our bullet journal series. This one's entitled, I've got the stuff, now where do I start? Now you may be wondering why I got you to look at all the different equipment you may want to collect before we start on the actual questions of why we need to have a bullet journal. Well the simple answer is, it's far more fun thinking about and buying guard equipment than it probably is going to be asking these questions. However, the questions are really, really useful to ask yourself. So before we get into the nitty gritty of our video, I thought I'd just mention that if you're unsure about what the bullet journal method is, then there is an excellent video by the creator of this method, Ryder Carroll, in the description box below. So if you click on that link and have a watch, don't worry, you can pause the video and I'll still be waiting here for you. A quick word here about what a reading bullet journal is compared to an ordinary bullet journal. It's fairly easy, whereas a bullet journal gives you an overall view of your life and you can put any kind of uh, collection or keep track of anything you like in it. A reading bullet journal is more focused on my reading life. So anything associated with my reading life, so readathons, series trackers, authors, recommended reads, all that kind of thing, it will be in there compared to having it in my ordinary bullet journal. That's not to say that you can't use anything I say today in your bullet journal in general. That's the beauty of it all, that it is totally adaptable to how you want to have your bullet journal or your reading bullet journal. So if you wanted to pause the video here a second and go grab a pen and piece of paper, that would be great. Or maybe a couple of pieces of paper thinking about it. Or you can click on the description box, there is a link to Google Drive where there is a little handout if you just wanted to print it out and use that instead. So here is our first question. Why are you wanting to create a reading or insert subject of your choice bullet journal? Now I'm going to do this with you because it's actually quite an interesting exercise and really, really useful to just focus you on what exactly you want out of this. So I'm going to put some really nice soothing music on and I'm going to write my answer with you. So see you shortly. got a couple more seconds just finishing up our answers. If you need a little more time, don't worry, just pause the video again and um, press play when you're ready.
So here are my answers to the question if you are interested. So I firstly I wrote down that I wanted to go with my reading slump and actually this really has helped me to do it. I wanted to read more, I wanted to create a different kind of journal to look back on and enjoy. I wanted to do it so it helped my mental health, I wanted to have fun and yes okay I also like knowing how much I've read. I also get asked a lot what I recommend and it's nice to have someone fun to refer to. So we're on to our second question now and it is similar to the first but it does have a different emphasis. So we're asking ourselves here what is it we actually want to write down, what, we, what is it we want to record and why do we want to record it? Now the why doesn't have to be anything deep, it could be just that I want to have fun with it and this is one of the things I want to do but it's well worth again sitting down and actually having a think about what is it that I want to do with this. So I'm going to do it with you again. This time, my this is speeded up for me because I actually spent way longer than I thought I was going to on this. And actually, it really clarified for me why I'm doing this journal. And actually, I was really excited to go back to my journal and carry it on. So I'm going to put on some really good, nice music again. And we're going to work our way through the question.
couple more seconds left before we finish the question. If you need more time, just pause again and you can come back to the video in a second. So, how did you do? I thought I'd share with you my answers just in case you were wondering. So, with my reading bullet journal, I wanted to track my reading and audio experience so I can know if I have a bad day or if I don't read. I wanted to also remember what my favourite books were or books I DNF'd or did not finish. I wanted to track my readathons uh, so that I can get ready for them and actually finish on time. I also wanted to create a yearly log so I can know when something comes out, which means I can then order via the library reservation service and not forget. I also wanted to have a series where I can keep track of where I am, especially if I'm waiting for the next book to come out or if I'm reading a really long series like Discworld and I wanted to keep track of where I was in the series. Now I did also include podcasts because sometimes I've started a new series and they have like a bajillion episodes and I'm not entirely sure where I am, especially if you're scrolling through you kind of miss it. I also wanted to keep a place where all my recommendations are. I do get a lot of recommendations working in the library so I like to have them written down so I can order it if I want to have something different. I also wanted to have a TBR or to be read page and a read page so I can remember what books, book groups I should say, not books, or readathons that I'm taking part in so I know the books I have to read and I like to compare with what I actually read in the end because sometimes I totally go off the rails as to what I'd actually planned and I come up with something radically different. I also wanted a favourite authors page which is just for fun and I haven't actually created that so we may just create that together. Now all of this actually does help with keeping my mental health in the best place and I have found since starting this back in January that it really really has helped me to focus on all the different things that I've wanted to do and actually has cleared my mind. So this leads me on to the final question that I'm going to ask you. So we're on to our last question and it's a hard and easy one at the same time. So my question is to you, how long do you want to spend working on your journal? I've got a couple of things that you might want to consider when contemplating how long you want to spend on your journal. So you may have other commitments. Uh, keeping a journal of any kind actually takes time, even for the simplest spread if you're just writing something down. What are you emphasising? Do you want to emphasise the content, as in what you're writing down more? Or would you prefer to emphasise the artistry of what's on the page, so what you're drawing? It could be both. There is no right or wrong answer to this, it's just something you might want to consider. Initial setup is something else you might want to consider as it will take time to start it up and create it. I have to admit I'm still creating some of the pages I meant to set up in the beginning of the year. Now the last thing I want you to consider is how much time you're wanting to spend not only creating your monthly pages but what about time to create your collections. I'm sure there are other things that you might want to consider depending on your circumstances. I think that covers pretty much most things at the moment. Before I start talking about how I spent my journal, I thought I'd just mention that there is a handout to go with this next section. So if you're having to try to write down everything frantically, it's all going to be in the handout. So just sit back and enjoy me talking about how I spent my journal. Now that we've contemplated how much time we want to spend on this journal and kind of know what we want from it in general, and we've got all our equipment together, it's now time to look at the actual ins and outs of creating a journal. Now I split my journal into three. I have yearly, monthly and collections or spreads. Now when I set up a journal I always put my yearly stuff together. So we're going to have a look at yearly first. So my yearly category tends to be things that I will need over the year. So it's going to have things like uh, my reading goal, which this year I have 100 books to read in a year. And let's just say I may actually need to create a new spread. It also includes what I like to think of a stats page, where I can see how many pages I've read, what's my favourite genre, if I have any genre that I seem to be missing and want to fill out on. I also like to create a future releases page or a future log so that I can keep track of when books are going to be published. I also like to have the Pop Sugar Challenge, or you can just do any challenge that you're going to be doing over a year. And the last one, which I haven't actually done so far, is a book group club book page, where if I'm part of a book group, I just want to have all of that ready and waiting to go. 
Next up is my monthly category, and this is something I do every single month. I haven't changed it yet, but I'm debating about whether to drop my book of the month page, but that's something else to contemplate. So included in this, I would usually put a cover page, so saying what month it is, a to be read list, a book to read one, a book of the month, and a daily tracking page where I can track my audiobooks and my physical books. Our last section or category is collections and spreads. Now this is the largest one, so I'm not going to show you any pictures for this. I'm just going to give you a whole list of ideas that you can use to create your own collections and spreads. Having said that, in the next video we will probably make a couple of these spreads together. So, here we go. So we have Podcast Tracker book review notes, readathons, series tracker, favourite author page, recommended reads, DNF or did not finish, genres to try, points page, 10 best books, books into films, childhood favourites, TBR veteran, new books, book reviews and book bucket list. I hope this video has given you some basic grounding into what a bullet journal is, well I should say what a reading bullet journal is, and how you want to create it. So if you're feeling inspired, feel free to go and create your own reading bullet journal. But if you're still looking at that blank page in a bit of a panic, having no clue still where to start, don't worry, we're going to address this in the next video, where we're going to create a couple of pages together. And we're also going to have a look at how we can quickly and effectively uh, decorate a page so you can have somewhere to start from. We're also going to have a look at my journal a little bit more in depth so you can get some more inspiration and ideas as to how you want to create your journal. And the last thing I just wanted to mention is one last document in our Google Drive uh, link. And that is the 100 Reads 2020 page that I've recreated for you to use if you want. Don't worry, you don't have to do 100 reads. There is one that has a blank number in it, so you can just use it if you just want to do 10 books or 20 books. Just adjust it to however you like it. So we've reached the end of this video. We hope you liked it, and we will see you in the next video.